We made it. So last night, I was reading um, an article that Smith Wiggleworth had written. And, you know, it was, it was referring to healing versus miracle. Healing versus miracle. We've been going through a study because um, we read, we're going through a scripture. You know, the scripture where it says that Jesus went to a town but could perform no miracles. But it does state that he laid his hands on a few of the sick and they were healed. Okay. And so that got us working. What happened that they could not get a miracle but yet were able to get some healings in a city? Now, we know that at that time, Jesus, that was his hometown. People knew him. Um, they knew him as the child that grew up. And so a little further down the study, being familiar with someone kind of takes away the honoring of that person, believe it or not. So, um, and it's not with everyone. It just so happens that in this case that jesus was from this town the being familiar were, um they didn't respect him they didn't honor him they didn't believe him and so he could not perform a miracle and the difference between the two was very simple a miracle is something that happens in complete healing instantly so the miracle is when healing happens instantly Healing, on the other hand, is a process. It is a process. And there needs to be an environment between... Uh, uh, there has to be a faith environment for a miracle to happen. I, I just, just digging in it. It says that you have... God moves and he cannot move. He cannot move in a place of unbelief. It doesn't, it's against him. And so we, we got to the bottom of that, but then somewhere down the line, we ended up, or I ended up in Second Peter. It was in Second Peter chapter 1, verse 3 to 9, that I began to, that was highlighted, okay? And if I had to pretty much title this, I would have titled it, uh, the supplements that you need to take with your faith, like a vitamin, and what it does is that it boosts your faith immune system. So you have to have faith to move a mountain. You have to have faith to create a miracle. So right now, you know, what I am firmly believing in this hour is that in this season, in this season, in the seasons to come, we are going to have to be people not just about faith, but about miracles. About miracles. Because we have to break the power of unbelief. And we are coming into places where people are asking, where is God? And why is so much happening in the world? Why are people dying? You know, why are good people passing? And if God can stop it, then why hasn't it happened? They have so many questions. And we have to be firm in our faith so that we can create an atmosphere for a miracle now let's go to second peter second peter chapter one okay it, it, it the title of my bible says confirm your calling and election okay what a perfect title confirm your calling if you were called then you are a miracle carrier if you were called then you are an atmosphere changer it is up to us where we are going to position ourselves with God. Okay? I'll start with verse 3. His divine power has granted to us all things that pertain to life and godliness through the knowledge of him. Right there. As we move forward, as we move forward, let the knowledge that you seek be found in him let the knowledge of this world in these this coming seasons okay for for the rest of your time here let it be that you're seeking out the knowledge of god increasing the knowledge of god okay 
of him who called us to his own glory and excellence, by which he has granted to us precious and a very great promise. Okay. The promise here is his coming. Okay. It is the coming. Because if you go down to chapter 3 in 2 Peter, chapter 3 in 2 Peter, it's about the day that the Lord will come. It's about the promise. It's about holding on steadfast to the promises of God. Okay. So that through them, you may become partakers of the divine nature. This divine nature talks about the cosmos. Okay. It's talking about the cosmos, which planet Earth is part of the cosmos system. So, yes, the nature found in here talks about Earth, but there's something happening in this cosmos. This cosmos says that there is a growth by, gen by germination. There is a growth happening by germination. Now, I don't think you've ever sat, or maybe you've watched a video where they show you how germs spread, okay? Right now, what is saying that you have become partakers of a divine nature, of a divine germination, that means that you will grow, and not only will you grow, but you will be carriers of the divine nature of God, okay? Here on earth. As it is in heaven here on earth. It's very simple. The problem, I think, is that we get too far out and forget that it's in. It's right here. Okay. Having escaped from corruption that is in the world. Now. The world. The world. I'm sorry. The nature part is about the growth germination, but the world is about the cosmos. It's Earth, right? So in nature, right now, everything is germinating. Like as the wind is blowing, everything is germinating. As the Holy Spirit blows, everything germinates. But on Earth, this word, world, talks about the cosmos, talks about the Earth. But I want to tell you something. As I dug in deeper, the scripture where Matthew says, the gate is wide. But the road is narrow. And those who take the wide gate always find destruction. Right there, he's talking about the gate, that wide gate being the world. He's referring to how people run through the gate of the world faster than they run to the one that says, follow me. So I found that interesting because he connected the world and he says, because of sinful desire. Then I get to sinful desire. Okay, this word desire is connected to a longing and is connected to lust. There are some things I found out about lust, which I want to teach separately for a class of deliverance because I want people to understand why lust has such a powerful grip on people. Why is lust so easy to, to take someone away from God? One, it's a, it's a desire found in sin. Okay, let's take, let's take pornography. Let's just take pornography. Okay, person starts to watch pornography. Something inside, which is sin, something in the sinful nature starts to manifest. There is a action to that manifestation. When that action manifests, the person begins to lock arms with the spirit of lust. This is just a small little thing. So when the person locks arms with the spirit of lust, I'm going to tell you what's the motive behind this, this spirit of lust. It is to destroy the fear of the Lord in humanity. There is nothing more connecting than a desire that is lustful. Because the word for lust... I'm going to tell you what it does. I broke down the, the Greek word. And as something said, break down the Greek word, okay? It's called epithumia. Epithumia is the Greek word for lust. It is longing, right? But let me break it down. The epi 
says it's in addition to, it's against, it's into, and it's over. The, the thumia is a spiritness. Spiritness. So, the spirit of lust... Okay, my Bible breaks down the definition as a longing that is something forbidden. It is a longing for something forbidden. Then it breaks it down on how it adds to, goes against, and then enters into the spirit. Okay? Going over what is right. So, in this desire, he's saying the sinful desire of the world is forbidden. It is forbidden. And then he goes on to say, for this very reason, make every effort to supplement your faith. Make every effort to take your vitamins to your faith. What does vitamins do? They boost the immune system. And there is supplements you need to have to boost your faith. You want to move in signs, wonders, and miracles absolutely but you gotta have these keys growing germinating in you so these things can happen so you don't get to um you know you don't get to get there overnight we don't just pick the fruit off the tree and eat it and we become i wish it was that simple there is a process and everyone in history who has been found in the revival books as a legend is always saying the same thing over and over again they don't even know each other i have had to be broken a thousand times or i had to have died a thousand times smith smith river words talk about being broken over and over again to get to that place you know why because the supplements you have to take are part of your character it's a part of the regeneration. You have to regenerate into the image of Christ. So, lust, the spirit of lust, knows that if you agree to it, you will be partakers, not of Christ, but of the world. Not only would you be partakers, but you will lose the fear of the Lord. And now I understand why our people are fearless towards God, but fearful about the world. That's a whole nother topic. I'm not going to get into that because I can and I get curious. Like, mm. But let's go on. So the supplement of your faith, okay? With virtue. That's number one supplement. It talks about virtue. What is virtue? Okay, virtue is the quality and excellence of any kind. So we have to begin to move in a good quality and it's in a, a way of excellence. I didn't say perfect, I said excellence. What does that mean? You can do a job in excellence and it might look perfect. But all you did was do the really good job. You made sure you covered your A to Z. That's all you did. You didn't go on and say, how, do it all. no, you just did A to C, how you know to do the job, and you got the job done so well that it looks excellent, okay? So that's virtue, doing the work as if you're doing it unto the Lord, okay? Then with knowledge, you know, with knowledge. Knowledge is the second supplement. Knowledge is the second supplement, and this word here, you know, it's funny because everyone reads the Bible, but you got to break down the word to bring forth the revelation. If you don't do that, then you're not going to get the fullness of the scripture. And guess what? It's not about knowing it. It's about getting it in you. you it has to germinate. It has to transform you. So you have 1108. I'm looking for it. Okay. It says knowing and understanding. Okay. So what are we understanding? We have to have with knowledge of knowing and understanding. We're, we're, if you look at what we're talking about, we're talking about knowing God. Okay? You're going you're gonna to get your virtue one. Your second supplement will be the knowledge of knowing and understanding who God is. Okay? 
The first one is doing all things because you know who God is and you want to do it the best you can because he's watching. Oh, and look at here, self-control. Let's look at that. It's one of the fruits of the spirit that we are not pursuing, maybe haven't really pursued, and I'm not going to say this for everyone, but the majority of us are not pursuing it. And we're okay with being wild. Okay, it's endurance. Endurance and look, consistency. Are you consistent in your life? Is if are are the things you're doing consistent? Consistency consistency brings breakthrough to your self-control. Okay? It will bring that breakthrough. If you lack not having self-control, then you need to be consistent. Because I'm sure if you don't have good self-control, you're not consistent. Okay, this is something that we have to grow up in. We have to start maturing and saying, hey, I'm an adult and I can control myself. I'm not a child that's three who is wild and rampant. I am an adult. I can control myself. So that's the place of self-control where we need to be and say, you're, you're going to be steadfast and consistent and you're going to endure so that you can have um, a lifestyle of self-control. So that's your third supplement. The next supplement, supplement is steadfast. Okay. So you can see that you would get steadfast once you gain self-control. And then the next thing will be your godliness. Okay. And I love this part. The next supplement will be brotherly affection. I want to read that one out too. So in the Greek, brotherly affection... Even if you feel like you know it, you should search it. It's a fraternal affection. It's the affilia love, one who loves his brother, brotherly love. New Testament used only of the love of Christians one to another, brotherly love out of a common spiritual life. Okay? So that's a supplement. That's a supplement to your faith. And of course, love. Then it goes on to say, for if these qualities are yours, if these qualities are found in you, I love I love the way Peter says this. If these qualities are found in you and, okay, and, and are increasing, if I find these things in you and you continue to increase, they keep you from being ineffective. It keeps you from being ineffective. Oh, so let's look at that. I just want to look to see what he's saying about being ineffective. Because are you a mover and a shaker for the kingdom? Are you doing things in your life? Are you living out your calling? Or are you stagnated? Are you stagnated? Then if you're stagnated, you're missing your supplements. You're missing supplements. And it's not, it's not as hard as saying I have to go out and get this, you know, get delivered and all that. It's very simple. Start increasing your supplements. So six. Okay, so this one is um, ineffective. 692. 692 states that unemployed. <laughs> lazy useless careless oh careless you know you ever seen somebody who like actually does something but really doesn't want to do it so kind of when they did it the first time they did it so carelessly that it kind of crumbled and you have to do it again yeah then you have idle with your hands top folded are you sitting around with your hand folded like there's nothing to do in the world you know um without work Inactive. Are you inactive? It says with the with with that choice, you're choosing to be inactive. And do you know that right here he's pausing, he's saying la lazy gluttony. He's saying gluttony is can be not just food, but laziness. So he says it will keep you from being ineffective. So if you do not have your supplements. Added to your faith. If you're not boosting your faith through these supplements, you can become ineffective. 
And then you're wondering why you're not feeling very motivated, maybe why you're not being able to do the things you were doing before. You were so on fire, but you're not on fire now. It's because you're missing supplements. Then it goes on to say, now I'm going on to, okay, we're still on verse eight. Or look at this, unfruitful in the knowledge of our Lord Jesus Christ increasing they keep you from being ineffective or unfruitful in the knowledge of the lord jesus christ for whoever lacks these qualities is so nearsighted that he is blind having forgotten that he was cleansed oh come on having forgotten that you were saved Let's just look at this really quick. I just want to look at this word cleansed. See, this is what happens. I start with one and I go on to the other because it's just, it's God. 25, this is how you will know. 2512 for the word cleansed is washed off. It's pure purification to make clean. So you've forgotten when these qualities begin to lack, you get blinded. Have you forgotten that you were cleansed? Have you forgotten that you were went through the purification? So guess what happens? So this gets full reign again for all works of flesh, as Galatians says. So we go back into the full reign of works of flesh. And you start doing fleshy things, and then you start thinking, well, maybe I just need, you know, the, the, you know, to be delivered. What you need to be delivered from is the, the right here, is from the fact that you have not been taking your daily supplements. You have not been uh, reading, or maybe you're not praying, or maybe you're not sitting with God. Whatever the case may be is where you need to return to. So if you were on fire, then you need to return to the fire. If you were a, 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 a prayer, then you need to return back to prayer. And I know that's the hardest thing to do when you stop praying is go back to praying because you have all this condemnation and going on that makes you feel like, you know, you're not even worthy to be on your knees before him. But that's a lie, you know, so you have to take your supplements and you have to allow it to boast your faith. So wherever you were before you became ineffective is where you need to go back to when you were effective, when you were operating. And it's gonna, it might take some time because vitamins don't kick in right away. You have to allow them to work the system again, okay? So that's where we want to get back to. And why am I saying all of this? Let me just finish. And I'll tell you why. That he was cleansed from his former sins. So therefore, brothers, be all the more diligent to confirm your calling and the election. For if you practice these qualities, you will never fall. What? A, what? A, there goes the answer. If you fail, then you need to go back, back and just practice the qualities. For in this way, there will be rich, richly provided for you an entrance into the internal kingdom of our Lord Jesus Christ, of our Lord and Savior Jesus Christ. So, okay, so therefore I, I intend always to remind you of these qualities, though you may know them, and you are established in truth that you have. And I'll stop there, okay? Why am I in this chapter if we started the videos talking about healing and miracles well i just said you need an atmosphere of faith to perform a miracle god needs an atmosphere of faith for a miracle to happen and if your atmosphere is not found in faith then it's hard for a miracle or a breakthrough to happen it's hard because God can't do unbelief. And, and God can do anything he wants. And he will deliver how he has to, but not how he would originally want it to. Do you see what I'm saying? So yeah, people say, I'm still waiting on a breakthrough, but how's your atmosphere? How's the temperature? Is there faith found? 
It, where's the level of faith? Is it on one, on two, on three, or four? Because from one to ten, there is a bracket. And from one to ten, where are you found? Because that's the level of the degree you're going to receive it. So are you on ten? You know, can, can God fully come in and complete a full circle miracle? Are you on a level one where he can only, you know, put a droplet and, and keep it alive till you get to 10? You, you know, that's, that's something only you would know. If you're honest with yourself, because the Lord knows all things, then that's where, you know, you will find the truth and you would say, Lord, help me. And he will. And you will start to go back to where you were affected. So. I'm sharing this because God is longing to manifest himself like never before. Everybody thinks the glory is just going to fall and we're all waiting for a Pentecostal glory to fall. And I got to tell you something. It already fell in on the day of Pentecost. The problem that we as believers are having is there is an issue with unbelief. And there's an issue with our faith because of unbelief, because the atmosphere is full of fear and unbelief. There's, there's so much going on, but we are partakers of what? What did he say here? We are partakers, partakers of the divine nature of God. That means you have been called to shift the atmosphere so that God can create a miracle in your life, in your family. And I mean, guys, I myself have to believe God for a miracle in, in, in things because I, I don't have a way to make it happen. Hands tied. Hands tied. You feel that way? You know, you don't, you don't, you doesn't, it's not in my bank accounts, not connecting. You know, the, the people are not connecting. Uh, the vision's not connecting with certain things. And um, and so I, I started looking at these factors. And, I, you know, it looks impossible. It looks impossible. But God is not in the, uh, he's not always in the just the possible. He's in that impossible. He's going to show up as a mighty God to us. He loves showing off his mighty work. But we have to create an atmosphere of faith. Now, I'll leave you with this. Just a little encouragement from our dear friend, Smith Riggleworks. Let's see if I can find it here. And I'm going to, um, ah, here it is. Okay. So after I did the uh, gifts and healings last night, um, I just started to tap into this article he had, like Precious Faith. And when I saw the title, I saw a pearl. I saw a pearl and how precious our faith is. And he's, and you know, doesn't the Bible say, do not feed your pearls to the swine? Like we're not to give up our faith to, to someone who doesn't care. Like to, to, to a, a place where it won't grow, where it won't germinate. How about that? Where a place where we're going to take our faith and we're going to throw it and it won't, it, it, in a pig pen. You're, it's not going to grow there. And so... It's not going to grow in the world. That's, you know, that's, it's going to grow in Christ. It's going to germinate in, in the nature and the divine nature of God. That's where it germinates. Okay. I just want to read this. It's very short. I won't take up too much of your time. It's Saturday. I know. Um, he says, this like precious faith that Peter is writing about is a gift that God is willing to give us all. And I believe God wants us to receive it. So that we may be, so that we may subdue kingdoms, work righteousness, and if the time has come to stop the mouth of the lion, we should be able, under all circumstances, to triumph, because we have no confidence in ourselves, but our confidence is only in God. It is always those people who are full of faith that have a good report, that never murmur, complain, that are in the place of victory. And they are not in the place of human order, but of divine order, since God has come to dwell in them. Like the precious faith is for all. 
but there are many. There may be some hindrance in your life that God will have to deal with it. It seems to me as if I had a thousand road engines come over my life to break me up like a potter's vessel. There's no other way into the deep things of God but a broken spirit. There's no other way into the power of God. God will do the exceedingly abundantly above all we ask or think for us when, we, when he can bring us to the place where we can say with Paul, I live no longer and another, even Christ, has taken the reins and the rule. I understand God by his word. I cannot understand God by impressions or feelings. I cannot get to know God by sentiments. If I'm going to know God, I'm going to know him by his word. Amen. I mean, uh, it's just hearing the heart of this man that was who they call the apostle of faith. I forgot about that. They call him the apostle of faith. You know, there was moments in that last story where he was telling a testimony. Can I tell you really briefly, guys? I know, I know. I just get so caught up and I love to hear stories. You know why? Because it increases my faith. It's a supplement to my faith. And so I, I'm reading the story last night and I shared it with a few. Hey, Letitia. And I shared it with a few. And, and he goes on. He says, I walked into the house. I, got a, I was doing a plumbing job. He goes, like I usually do. I'm a plumber. And my hands were dirty and I was dirty. And I always get these phone calls for prayer at night. So I go to these jobs and I'm, I'm dirty and my hands are dirty to pray for the sick. And this one night, it was 10 o'clock. And, and I get a phone call and I leave the job and I rush over. I didn't take a shower. My hands were dirty. And they said, the doctor said that she's not going to make it. They have exceeded, they have, they have, they've drawn out everything they could. There's nothing else left. This girl's not going to survive. My daughter will die. And he goes on, okay. He looks at the condition. He sees the spirit of death is upon the girl. And that the condition can only, right now, what's happening can only be God. And so what does he go on to say? He goes on to say, well, what I need you to do, ma'am, is I need you to go to bed. She goes, oh, no. I had these clothes on for three weeks. I have not slept. I'm not going to bed. Then he goes to the children. Children, I need you to go to bed. No, we won't go to bed. He tells the same thing to the son. I need you to go to bed. He says, no, I can't go to bed. He turns around and tells them, well, there's nothing more than I can do here. And gets ready to walk out. The mom runs after him and says, we'll go to bed. Please come back. He comes back. They go to bed. He starts from 11 o'clock to 3 a.m. on the bedside next to the bed of the sick with their with it on his knees from those from 11 to 3 30 in the morning 3 30 in the morning he realizes that the spirit of death has now taken her because the life came out of the face all of a sudden the devil comes up manif now the devil manifested himself when smith got manifest like when there was signs and miracles happening he would use somebody in the room to manifest at this moment it was a whisper and it begins to tell him you came all this way for what to fail and pretty much saying like ha i got her right smith says it's impossible that god will send me here for nothing something has to happen he gets up he starts to look out the window and there goes the face of Jesus with a million rays of light. A million rays of light. You know what else he quoted? He quoted scripture and he said, one who lives in me is greater than the one who lives in the world. And what he said that and turned over to the window, Jesus' face appeared. A million lights, rays of light came forth out of his face. And when he turned to the girl, life, color, everything was back in her. She turns around, goes to sleep, wakes up in the morning, gets dressed, goes to the piano, and begins to worship the Lord. And why did she begin to worship the Lord? Because the very disease that was attacking her was shredding her lungs 
to pieces. So she had not much of her lungs left. Now when Jesus came in the room, she had a full set of lungs. She was completely restored, back on the piano, giving God glory. And everybody was worshiping the Lord in the house. Come on. Man, what if I would give to just see this and be there? Like, just to be like, um, just to be like a witness of this amazing moment. But you know what Smith said? He said, I couldn't have them in the room because they were operating in unbelief and in sympathy. It's almost like they were okay with the fact that this is it. And God cannot move in this atmosphere. And right there, he gives the explanation why and the difference between healing and miracles. Healing can manifest itself even when unbelief is there, but a miracle cannot. A miracle needs faith. So, this morning, this morning, just just sit with the Lord. And if you need your faith increased, take the supplements we talked about. Begin to activate yourself. Because if you're not taking your vitamins, if you're not taking what we just talked about, you're becoming ineffective. Go back to the place where you were effective for Christ. Go back to the place where you were effective for the world, for, the, for your body, for the believers. Where were you effective? Go back and let's begin. And remember, you're not beginning again. You're just starting where you left off. And that's the goodness of God. So let me just pray. Father, we just thank you for this word. We thank you for the seed. Let this seed have fallen, God, on good grounds that no bird in the air will come and take this seed of faith. Lord, water it, nurture it, cultivate it, germinate it. Do all that it needs to be done to nourish, nourish what you are depositing in us today. God, give us another level of faith in this season. Not just to perform the signs and miracles, God, but to see your mighty hand over situations that look like they are dead. And so, Father, we just thank you. We honor you. We glorify you, God. We give you all the praise. You are worthy. You are worthy. You are worthy, God. You are worthy of us. You are worthy and us to be able to have that privilege, God. To be able to come into your presence boldly, freely, is a, is a great privilege. And so, Lord, we just thank you for that. In Jesus' name. If you are suffering for and need an increase of faith, come on. And now is the time. Now is the time. Now is the time. They're prophesying that the glory of God will come, but it's not going to come if there's not an atmosphere for it. We need an atmosphere for the glory to come. Atmosphere is important. It's what it's either what gives you peace or takes your peace. It's so important. So I leave you with that this morning. Thank you for listening. You know, if you're here, God sent you. And maybe this is a word for you. I will see you the next time.